talk about the foundations of a tripart being how we are oh, three parts of, of, of a being, how we're made in the image of God, God's Father, Son, tonight, and Holy Spirit. Uh, and we we'll picked uh, up pick up what we left off last they week. They would do that best. And we was talking about uh, the we'll different see, well, we'll, the, the three folds, the three parts that we are made in. We talked about forward. the spirit, the soul, and the body. And on the spirit is the part of man which contacts and relates to the spiritual realm. This and part let me know when you can of see man has screen. union and knowledge of God. Then we have the soul, the part of man which contacts and relates yep, to the emotional and mental Amen. realm. Amen. Our mind, our will, our Amen. emotions, our reasons, and the way we think. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's very closely tied <laughs> against the spirit. The spirit there is a dark. separation. Got dark. Yeah, and then we have what something. we call the body. Um, All right. The body is the part it. of the man which okay. contacts and relates to the physical okay. earth, the so realm of contains the, our five senses. This is our outer shell, our outer man, which um, is born and it dies and it goes back to the dust. And we talked about it has um, five parts, five senses, okay? And okay. as we talked about last week, we want to get a little deeper, especially to understand uh, why we had um, the difference between the spirit and the soul, okay? So what is the difference um, this is not an easy question, and I will venture to say um, many Christians who come to church every Sunday cannot differentiate between the soul and the spirit. Okay, and it's and it's not too hard. It's not difficult to distinguish between the body from the spirit and soul because we we understand the flesh part, right? But many of us find it difficult to distinguish from the soul and the spirit. So we're going to go in a little bit deeper to what are the differences, okay? So um, the first scripture I'll read um, is found in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And we talked about this on last week, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And it reads, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And understand the scripture clearly states that each part is different and plays a role. And the, and the author of Thessalonians, Paul, he used and, which in Greek means is different. It means a difference. And like he said, the spirit and soul, the body from the spirit and soul. So they clearly distinguish that there's a difference between our spirit and our soul okay mm -hmm. sister branch can you read this next slide right here mm -hmm. for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than to any two-edged sword piercing even even to the divining asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow is that marrow marrow oh, right. yeah marrow, marrow. Mm -hmm. and it's discerning of the thoughts and intent of the heart and so, obvious no you can stop right you can stop right there that's this uh so i'll add the commentary to it okay okay so um so again we see where the writer of hebrews many believe was paul but it was never there's an argument with paul or someone else but um the writer of hebrews says dividing asunder of soul right and mm -hmm. spirit and he talked about and compared to our joints and mm -hmm. our marrow we have a difference between our bone joints and the marrow that's inside the bone okay so and this vibe is in the verse that they are two separate and what is apparent is the word of god divides these two parts from each other so i know many of us are we learn visually so i went on and i found a, a, a an example of how we are created okay so what i have here is three circles okay the outer circle represents the body okay mm -hmm. the inner soul circle represents the soul and then the third circle i highlighted is a colored in gray that reflects the spirit that is that 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 is the spirit. It's our only connection 
to God, okay? Our only connection to God. So we have the body, soul, and spirit. And we're going to go a little deeper to understanding, again, the difference between soul and spirit. And we read two passages of scripture that clearly differentiates that there is a difference between our soul and our spirit, but they kind of intertwine, but there is a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to hope this, 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 this picture right here brings clarification a little bit as we go deeper. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Can't the soul connect with God? I mean, isn't the soul how the body expresses itself to both people and God? In a I sense. Mean, I mean, the soul is the what? The mind, the your will. Your mind, your will, your reason. Yep. Right. Our emotions. Don't we communicate? That's, isn't that what prayer, when we pray, isn't that part of it? When we praise, Absolutely. isn't that what we're doing? Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And that soul, again, is a conduit. You know, it's like a conduit between our body and our spirit, right? And what we feed our soul is what we're going to eat. You follow me? So our soul, if we feed our soul the flesh, guess what's going to serve? Flesh. The flesh. If we feed our soul the things of God, guess what it's going to serve? The spirit. The spirit. So um, we got to be careful. We, we, we have to worship God in spirit and truth. And I believe, Minister Branch, many Christians are, um, they worship God in soul and, and body. And what I mean by that, you know, many people say, well, I love the Lord with my heart. But what does the Bible says about the heart? The heart can fool you. Particularly if you don't ingest the word of God. So then you wonder why some Christians have certain beliefs and you'd be like, why do you believe that way? Yeah. Because most of them go by what they hear or what they feel. Again, that soul realm, our feelings, what I've heard, what I feel, what I believe to be right. But what's the only thing that we know that makes sure... What's the only thing we have that guarantees that we are right? The word of God. So that's why it's so important to feed your spirit the word of God. Because the soul can fool you. The heart can fool you. It really can. And you'll start believing things and feeling things. You know, get really emotionalized. That's why a lot of our churches oftentimes, especially in, I'll call the, the, the predominantly the black church, many of us are so, we've been emotionalized. Yeah. You know, if the yeah. preacher don't preach a certain way and he don't get me feeling a certain way, he, he didn't preach good. Yeah, that's, you know, when they do that dancing and stuff. All that stuff, the dancing and all, they know, there's nothing wrong with rejoicing in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. As long as we worship him in the spirit and truth. And what I've learned when I remember, I came from a, 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 a Baptist upbringing and I'm talking about, they would shout all service and God forbid you go to a Pentecostal church, <laughs> <laughs> man, they would shout, speak in tongues and the whole service. Right. Mm, right. And I thought that was, um, true worship. And I'm not saying some of the folks are not worshiping God. True. Right. But when I joined, my mother went, joined Trinity's Assemblies of God, which at the time was predominantly white, and now it's very multicultural. That's when I learned, you can worship God, and you don't have to do a dance. The I know was, that because I was, when uh -huh. I was a kid, um, I, there's a lot of people would do that. I used to pray that my mother wouldn't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't fall out. Please don't fall out. <laughs> you know, what's funny. My mother was one, she was the main, one of the main shouters. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, my mother would shout and, and, and speak in tongues, run around church, right? My mother was the main shouter. And when we joined um, Dalton, 
I think Sister Kendra was trying to join one second. I thought she saw. It. I thought I let her in. Hold on. There she is. Hey, Sister Kendra, thanks for joining tonight. But um, she's connected. But my mother was the main shouter, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Sister Kendra, thanks for joining tonight. Hey. God bless hey. you. God. You didn't miss too much. It'll be online too if you want to go back on YouTube. But um, I, I watch you on. I watch the rest of everyone on YouTube. Okay, God bless you. But Sister Branch, as you were saying, my mother was a main shouter. Mm. She would shout and speak in tongues, right? Mm -hmm. Run around church, and I thought if you didn't do that, you wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I was scared of it, and my mother, she would be most of all the time. We look, we'd be praying and we'd be holding our breath because we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but she usually just have a tissue. She usually just cry. Okay. But but check, but check this out. <laughs> this, this is a point I want to make. When we went to when we transferred to Trinity's Assemblies of God, where we moved our membership from the Great Dalton to Trinity's Assemblies of God, right? Mm -hmm. They worship God truthfully in spirit and truth. And I remember one day I said, Ma, you don't shout no more. <laughs> I, I said, why would you shout no more? She got so angry with me, right? And I was mm -hmm. asking a real question. I didn't know, like, the, the spirit not moving you like that? <laughs> oh, all those white folks staying at you. That's what <laughs> look, look, George. <laughs> but George. <laughs> <laughs> better not make a peace. Mm -hmm. But they George, do not do that. They spoke in tongues because Assembly of God is nothing but a, a break off of Pentecostal church, okay? Mm -hmm. So they spoke in tongues and stuff, and they worshiped God. And, they, and it wasn't a quiet like a church, like you go to a Catholic church, you better not whisper too loud, right? Mm -hmm. But the spirit really moved. And I've really seen the manifestation of the spirit moving in decency and order. And I recall, like, Folks always want to speak in tongues, right? Mm -hmm. And some churches believe, some 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 denominations believe, if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the spirit of God, which is not true. Tongues are the gift; it's one of the gifts of the spirit. One of the gifts. If you don't all speak with tongues, and not all, and Mr. Brand, the last scripture in that chapter says, "Not all speak with tongues," but, but they, they be speaking then. But they tend to forget. <laughs> I know, right? But they, but the problem, is, <laughs> but, but the problem is, they leave that verse off. Paul said, "Not Thank all you. speak." So what? Why do we drop that passage of verse when they try to make you feel if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have, you're not filled with the spirit? So I watched in this church, and this is a big church, a big size church, right? And Somebody was speaking tongues in the left part of the sanctuary. They just start up church, we worshiping, the, 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 we were worshiping God, everybody's praying and worshiping. And then some guy or lady was standing up and started speaking in tongues, right? And as soon as they finished, somebody on the other side of church, clear over, will bring interpretation. Mm. Set up, huh? No, they didn't even know. It really wasn't a setup. Uh, uh, I've seen it too. Well, that we came from a church like that. Um, we was brought up in that, and me and George. So that happened in our church too. Our church, we speak in, at that church, we speak in tongues. Yeah. And stuff like that. It's, we it's, just, it was just, the tongues is like edif it's ed edifying the Lord. Amen. Say that one more time for our viewers on YouTube. It does what, Sister Branch? It edified the Lord. Amen. I mean, it's for the Lord, you it's know. For, Lord. for you it's and for the Lord. Lord. And you could do, you could do it at home, do it in secret. Amen. Um, but if you don't have nothing to say and nobody's interpreted, then um, be quiet. You have to be quiet. I mean, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Because Paul, like, you're not edifying the church when you speak in tongues. No, no interpreter here. And God forbid you have a new person who don't know. They're gonna think you all crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, I used to think of George. She was crazy. <laughs> he came out the bathroom with this towel wrapped around his head, right? Uh, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he started uh, speaking in tongue. Uh, I took off running. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought he had lost his mind. That's it. <laughs> uh, 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 
That's exactly mm-hmm. it. Amen. Because I wasn't saved yet. George was saved. See, and that goes to the point I was saying. You didn't right. understand it. So you're like, what's wrong with my husband? But he was just I edified. He, he, was, his mind. he was being edified in the spirit. He was edifying God. He was worshiping God in, in tongues. Right. So, but folks who don't understand, they're going to like, what's wrong with that person? Yeah. So Paul was like, let's just, you know, if you're going to have a tongue speaker, have an interpretation. Yeah. So how many of our churches do that? Not many. Not many. Not many. <laughs> They'll speak in tongues and, and and God knows when I start preaching and you know how preachers, sometimes they preach and they break out in tongues and come back into the word. You ever heard that? They would, yeah. talk, they would preach it, then they'll go into a tongue, so they get the yeah, spirit. My pastor used to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and oh, I'm like, oh, he's so spiritual. He's yeah, so he, spiritual. I would say the same thing, Mr. Brand. Man, I must not be moving in the spirit because I don't feel the utterance of tongues come upon me when I'm he preaching. <laughs> you know, but mm-hmm. why should they if no one's there to interpret what I said? Right. But a lot of it goes back to emotionalism, right. soulish. Exactly. Exactly. We're feeding we're, we're feeding the soul with incorrect stuff. Then you wonder why you can't worship God in your spirit because your spirit man is being malnourished and you're feeding the soulish in your body and you're wrong. And you're saying, well, I'm doing it from the bottom of my heart. But the Bible says the heart can fool you. It's exceedingly mm-hmm. wicked. So you must have the spirit fed. You must have the spirit of God so you know that you're worshiping God in spirit and truth. And the best way to do that is through the word of God. Amen. And like Minister Amen. Branch always says, in its context. Don't <laughs> add and don't take yes. away. And read it in its context. Amen. Amen. So hopefully this slide gets you, we're going to go deeper. Now I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but hopefully this slide will show you how our tripart being is, is, is made up. And our goal is, that's why I highlighted it in gray and put the spirit in green. Our goal is to feed our spirit, man. So what's the green one? No, the green is I just, it's symbolic. I just put that, that we want to meet. Green means go, right? Yeah. And now the body is the soul. I mean, the body is, um, what is what the body? See. What everybody, everybody sees. Everybody sees. Everybody soul sees. Is, the soul is your mind. Mm-hmm. That you're thinking about and your soul is like your mind and heart connected. That that you soul sense. and heart, and then right. the spirit. I don't got that. One. The spirit is your inner. Is is your real? The spirit is the real you. Okay. Okay, but we okay. can't see the soul and spirit. Okay. But people can see the body. That's why we're mm-hmm. so easy to, to to distinguish the body. But when you try to separate the soul from the spirit, it's a little bit. It's a little bit more complicated. And that's why we're breaking it down um, so you can understand the difference, okay? And mm-hmm. um, the soul can work, like Minister Brand says, work with your spirit if you're feeding it the right stuff. Right. So one thing I always tell folks, they say, so say, show me in the Bible. What does the Bible say about it? That's the easiest way to really feed your spirit and challenge folks when they when they give you some well we we do it this way okay is that bible or is that tradition right that's the first thing i say is that bible or tradition like and and spirit spirit of life uh you remember we was, we was on communion and we were putting the black plastic gloves on mm-hmm. M- uh, minister clark the older guy he calls me on the phone and tells me don't ever do that again why? You, you don't wear black gloves to serve communion. Okay. You wear white. Right. Why? But I, Why? I, asked, I, said, I, said, I said, first question I did, I said, where's that in scripture? I got to wear white gloves. Right. And he was like, well, well uh, that's just the way. I said, tradition. And there's nothing tradition. wrong with tradition. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. Some tradition is good. I don't think Jesus and the disciples wore gloves at all. Minister Brand, <laughs> this is what I told this is why this is why I got him real quiet. I'm not picking on Minister Clark. I said, Mr. Clark, so if we he said, well, that's the way you do communion. That's how he goes in. I'm like, okay, if we really did communion the way Jesus and his disciples, we will all lay on the floor. Mm-hmm. We have and, one piece of unleavened bread and one cup of of of, of and we'll share. Wine. We had to share. Share wine. 
Exactly. All the way around the corner. I said, everybody would drink out the same cup. Mm -hmm. And everybody, and I would break the bread with my bare hands and pass it to mm -hmm. you. Right. I said, so should we do that next Sunday? No. <laughs> I didn't like to drink at the. I didn't like to drink at the, my like ex or my daughter. I, I, I didn't I would like say to drink. he ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> but check, check it out, Sister Branch. I didn't even like to drink after my ex or my daughter. I don't like drink mm -hmm. after them. Mm -hmm. I I used to um drink after George, but I don't. Not my children. Oh, it's that's my daughter. I'm not, I'm not drinking after you. You know. Yeah. I'm Kids carry germs, all types of stuff. So, right. so let you know, alone you get a sore after, throat because you don't know. You don't know what about kids then. all day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I drink out the cup. No, here you go, Miss. Here you go, Pastor um, uh -huh. um, Mr. Branch. He would look no. at me like I was crazy. Like I'm right. not drinking out that cup. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way they did it because that's the practice, right? Mm -hmm. And we've changed, you know. So I said, so he got quiet. I said, so. I can honor that tradition because God is holy, you know, and white represents holy. I can honor that, um, but understand it's not a requirement to do communion. I said the biggest part of communion that matters is the representation of the body and the blood. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. It's That's not it. what I have, not have. I got a yeah. black yeah, suit on it. and a white minister's collar and I got white blood. That doesn't matter. Right. I you I want you to you wear purple or green or yellow. You can wear anything. Mm -hmm. I can but, take green. Um, <laughs> I can but, take and at my church, um my uh church I left race. Mm -hmm. Every the men wore white gloves when they yeah, we come did down too. the aisle. They all had on their white gloves. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yes, they did. They had them the, mm. I had no gloves. You didn't have none. You was a deacon. <laughs> the deacons had their white gloves. You gotta be a deacon. Yeah, my church had white gloves on, so you know yeah, they do it on community. You talk about, about new Mount Joy. You gotta have your you gotta they be a deacon. That. Right. And yeah. I and I mean my former church, we wore white gloves, right? Right. We did. So I understand right. the tradition. And I have right. no I have nothing wrong with following tradition. But mm -hmm. I had to explain to him we never put tradition over the word. Right. And and then I told him, I said, do you understand where a lot of that tradition came from? Why mm -hmm. they made why why a lot of black churches wear white gloves? Because as slaves, they made us wear white gloves because they thought we wasn't clean. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that stuff was passed down. And we took it and we spiritualized it. And some of us have made it gospel. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not knocking it. And we made the adjustment. We will wear white. There's nothing <laughs> wrong. But as long as you understand behind it but right. i would never replace white gloves with the bread and the blood that represents christ jesus i'm off my I soul can't, but i, I, I just I, can't I, believe that i mean he gave me though he gave me the fifth degree too you, you should have heard that conversation he i didn't believe say, you he didn't say hello <laughs> this was minister clark no minister the, the clark, little old man the, 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 old, the old older guy. guy yeah the old guy the old yeah, guy that does, yeah yeah okay. Man, he called me. I'm like, hey, hey. Then he went right in on me. I'm like, good morning to you, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the death. Bless his heart. I, I mean, that at least I, I say, but bless him because yeah, um, he's from the old school. And that's and, right. Exactly. And you just, I know you just politely stood there. Oh, let I, him I talk politely. Because you can't hurt, you can't hurt their feelings. No, no. I, right. I can't polite. hurt their feelings. You know? I was, you know, I was polite you know. and I wasn't gonna argue with him. It's not mm -hmm. it's not the debate, but I had to I had to bring understanding to him. And, mm -hmm. and he understood. They old. He's old. Yeah. Yeah. And, a, and another thing he said, and I don't mean I don't mean to stop our Bible study, but he was like, and also when you finish communion, you ain't supposed to do a benediction. You he can't. Said, this what he, I'm telling you what he this tradition. He said, because That's what crazy. happened is what happened is they they left out and they were they sang hymns and and praise. That's how they left. Mm -mm. I said, "Well, that's, that's what he's saying you're supposed to do." Mm -hmm. That's what he said you're supposed to do. So you notice this Sunday, Pastor Clark didn't do the benediction. I noticed that. Yeah, God was waiting for them to do the benediction. We yeah, and I had to jump in there. It was mm -hmm. awkward, and I had to like go in peace. But Minister Clark, yeah, has pressed him so hard, and I'm like, "Well, you know, hey, you and I had you explained for everybody else because I wait." I love that part. Yeah, and I had explained to him, I said, what's the benediction for? 
He like, well, I said, show me a scripture where it says I got to take communion. I can't bend a dick. I can't mm -hmm. bring. Well, you starting to sound like the parasites. What you call them? Oh, that's what I mean. That's, 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 I mean, and he got real quiet again. But I was kind. I said, "Sir, you know, there's nothing wrong with benediction, but we should never put tradition over the Bible." Right. I said, a benediction is basically a blessing. Mm -hmm. So I'm blessing the church as we leave. Right, because I feel good when we say that. I can feel the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And Amen. He, and he got real quiet. He's and and his argumentative tone became. Um, just we became to discuss it, right? But mm -hmm. again, he brought a lot of tradition, and again, the, what I'm using that for is his soul was fed stuff that's not biblically correct. So in mm -hmm. his mind, he believed he thought that was he held that up as the gospel until someone there to teach him that's not there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. Nothing right. wrong with but, that. You have to but, show but him. And uh, you have to show him in the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mostly, yeah, he has to, to show him in the Bible. And Amen. You got to show him the word that say that. Say that again? You got to show him the word that's in the Bible that say that. Yeah, that's what we did. That's like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first thing we did. I said, show me. And I, I would just challenge him. I said, hey, just show me in the scripture. And he couldn't. I said, because it's not there. Mm-hmm. So I said, so again, sir, just be careful that we never elevate tradition over the word of God. Right. Well, but, you know, the, at least he did it quietly with you. Oh, yeah. And you he, did, he, he did. pulled me aside. He didn't do he it. He pulled you aside. Yeah. I and thought I, that, that's really nice. It was. Because, and you you were standing there. That was very nice. Amen. Because you could have got mad and told him oh, about your face. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 it's no need to get mad because I, I look at it as a teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. because right. there was a time I thought the same so when God revealed to me the truth the truth of God I was like oh okay a lot of stuff we do is tradition mm -hmm. right it's that's not right. gospel it's, mm -hmm. yeah but that's why but the point I'm going to make for this class is that soul needs to be sped fed. Mm -hmm. we need to worship God in spirit and in what truth mm -hmm. Soul and spirit. spirit. So, our, so our spirit, spirit and truth. Our soul <laughs> needs to be fed. We need to be given the truth so we can feed our spirit, man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Can I get somebody to read this next um slide right here? Can I get a couple of readers to read this? The both of these. Matthews. You said Matthew and um yeah. Ezekiel. Yeah, so, yeah, read Matthew 10, 28, and Ezekiel 18 and 4. And we're talking about the soul not, now. Okay. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body and heal. Amen. And go over to Ezekiel 8, 14, 8, 14, 18, 4. 8 Yeah. Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that Sinner. 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 it shall die it shall die amen amen so when you look at these two passages of scripture we're talking about the soul right mm -hmm. in that realm mm -hmm. our our emotions our thinking our uh that realm um no man can kill your soul but the body can be killed mm -hmm. okay and that's mm -hmm. why when we look at the soul it's is so very closely intermingled with the spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, Ezekiel says the soul belongs to the Lord. And any soul that what? Sin. Sin. So Sin of God. But God has offered us a way to salvation. salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For the wages Amen. of sin. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life. <laughs> so the soul, it shows you right here, the soul can sin. Mm -hmm. If it's fed flesh and worldly. Right. So, and the soul that sinneth will surely die. 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 But again, we thank the Lord, our Savior, our Master our keeper 
Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Shalom, our peace, Jehovah Elohim, our, our creator, has given us a way out of it through eternal life, through what he did on Calvary's cross. So we're going to go. So one must be what? Born again. Born again. Mm -hmm. Can I get someone to read John 3, 3 on the side? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What? So you tell me I, I gotta go back in my mother's womb? Right. That's what um we call him Nick, the, we call him Nick at night. Nick at night. Nick at night. Because he came to him at night, right? He didn't want to like see him because he was a he was a Pharisee, he's supposed to be a high priest, and he's supposed mm -hmm. to know the law. And here he is coming to this man. They they were cursing out like he ain't he ain't from God. And he came to him at nighttime, Nick at night. Hey, mm -hmm. master. And Jesus said, "You don't know this." So you tell yep. me I gotta go. I, I gotta go back into my mother's womb. Is that possible? Is that I mean everything was outrageous to them. They took everything he said was like it's outrageous. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why I say you must be born again. Mm -hmm. The term born again means that man has already, we all have a natural birth, mm -hmm. right? We all born from our mother, right? Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. we must have a spiritual birth, which comes by faith in Christ and what he's done on the cross and is available to us all. Mm -hmm. Now, without the new birth being born again, you cannot understand or comprehend the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Now, when you when you accept Christ Jesus, and I'm going a little off into left field, I'm going to bring it back. When you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he immediately gives you the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and then what you do is okay now i want to get baptized if you have time i believe if you have time the ability get baptized right mm -hmm. then you go and get baptized which shows baptism is nothing but an outward expression to the world that you are a new creature old things have passed away behold all things are new in me Mm -hmm. My old man has gone down into the water, which resembles, resemble, uh, which represents death. And then I come out the water, born again. There's nothing but a representation of what's happening to you um, internally. Okay? Mm -hmm. But spiritual born again is when you truly accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He gives you his Holy Spirit. Mm. So you have the Spirit of God now connected to your spirit man. So now you're able, once you're fed the word of God through your soul realm, you're able to worship him, what? Spirit and in what? True. Because now your spirit man, the real you, is connected to God. And God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in True. So, mm -hmm. what I found out as I was reading mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is the is the same as the Spirit in you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same. They're one God in three forms, three parts. Right, and that's the, the so the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit dwells in you, right? He dwells in you. Wow. Spirit of God. I see, I didn't know. Him. I thought it was two different entities. Yeah. Minister Branch, feel free to jump in too, sir. Um, could you, uh, you I'm always not sure I understand what you're saying. I Thanks thought again. that the spirit was in us was you're different. About human spirit. And I thought it was different. I didn't think it was the Holy Spirit, like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know? I thought it was something. I was, uh, I I, he was like a, a person to me. Now I got to put them together, you know, and it's just a wild thing. <laughs> but but, but, it, but what it is, is again, you were born again. 
Yeah. Your spirit man has come alive. Mm-hmm. Your human. Said again, Ms. Human Brand. Spirit. Your human spirit. Your human, human spirit. spirit, right, has come alive. Mm-hmm. We call it regeneration. You were born. You come alive. And now you are connected to God. So now when you read the Bible, it begins to make more sense to you. Yeah, it does. It does. Because the Holy Spirit is directing you and opening your spiritual eyes. Yes. That's and why. And he really, he really will direct. He will. He'll tell you. He he'll, will. he'll tell you what he tells me what scriptures to me. He will. He'll bring it back. Mr. Brands can tell you. He, much as he out there mentioning in them corners, I know the spirit <laughs> brings back to you scriptures when someone challenges you, doesn't he? All the time, he says. All the time. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, there's certain scriptures I know I've committed to heart and I know where they at. But some ones I, I don't have totally committed, but I know the word of God. And, and and it's amazing how the Holy Spirit will breathe right into your mind. Right. When you need it. And you know, I learned also, he could, when you're looking for a scripture, he helps you find that scripture. And it could be on the same page you um looking for. I said, here it is. You, you know, know what he, when, and that's amen to that. You know what I also find is very incredible. There's times I've been in church, and before I was even in the ministry, and I was going through something, and the preacher will preach a word that was almost for me. Like, man, <laughs> I'm like, did, did did he know my story? Right. Is he come over my house? Was he in my house? Was he going <laughs> Must be the... a camera somewhere. I'm saying it was, it was almost scary. I remember <laughs> one time, and I'm gonna tell you, this is why I realized you don't have to preachers don't have to hoop and holler to move your spirit. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you an example. I was raising that. If your preacher then run down the aisle and jump and hoop and, and and have a good closing to get the whole church standing up, it wasn't a good word. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. Me too. I wasn't raised, but I went to a church when we got saved like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he loved to sing. And he kept singing this song over and over until I just sat down. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down. I, ain't I, heard, I can't. Listen, then everybody else started sitting. <laughs> listen, the brand. I heard a preacher say one time, um, I heard somebody sing a song and it, and it moved me. I felt chills. I was mm -hmm. like, this must be the spirit, right? He said, they sing this gospel and move me. I felt the spirit move. I felt these chills all over my body. Mm -hmm. said, then I went to a Patti LaBelle concert and mm -hmm. I felt the same chills. <laughs> and she wasn't singing gospel. So I knew that had to be. He said, so I was like, hold up. But the point, the point I want to make here is I was in the military and I was in reserve duty, right? Mm -hmm. And we had Sunday Bible. We had Sunday service for soldiers who wanted to go to church. We had it in the in the cafeteria, and we had a um, a chaplain. So we had this guest chaplain from a white guy from another unit. He came to bring the word to us, right? And I forget what I was going through. I was going through something heavy around that time. And he spoke so much to me from his word, what he preached. It was like, Sister Branch, a camera was placed on my body and mm. followed me everywhere you went. <laughs> and he didn't he didn't hoop, he didn't holler. He just sat there opened the Bible and he preached the word. And he taught and preached and taught and preached. And we were quiet. And I remember I wanted to cry because it was moving me that much. I'm like, my God, Lord, you sent this man here for me. I, he did. He did. Yeah, because she like, was looking for answers. I was looking for mm -hmm. answers, and he sent this white old guy who I never met again. So after that, he gave me the word, and I'm talking about inside. I was crying, but I, I was a soldier in my uniform. I couldn't cry in front of other soldiers, <laughs> but inside I was crying so hard, my heart was breaking because I like Lord, you did this for me, and that's when I realized how God moves. Mm. But in saying, order to feel that you must be born again, right? But you I must... was born again. I was saved. Yeah. I was saved. So my spirit was being fed by the Holy Spirit that day. Right. Heavily. And so it, when you talk to the Jehovah's Witness, 
They don't know the spirit. They don't have, they don't. They don't know they the don't. spirit. They mm -hmm. don't. So that's why, as much as, I don't care how much, how much word you pound them with, until they have the Holy Spirit, until they become born again, it's going to be black words on white paper like this in front of you. Mm -hmm. Because their soul has been fed so much incorrect doctrine. So what I do, folks like that, I just say, Lord, I pray that you open their hearts and minds and you bring them revelation. That can only come from God, that you save them. Mm -hmm. But right now, their minds are clouded. They're darkened. And they never understand. No matter how much I've taught the whole Jehovah Witness, no matter how much you give them, like, hey, let's look, they just clouded because they don't have the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Could someone read Titus 3, 4, 6 on the side? Regeneration of the Holy Spirit. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. <clears throat> Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And regeneration means to renovate, to bring old to new. Let me let me add let me add a verse. Go ahead. Absolutely. She said she didn't uh, understand Absolutely. that. Maybe this might help. Yes, sir. This is in Ephesians two, first okay. verse. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you have he quickened. Quickened means to make alive. Make alive. Yes, sir. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yes, shout I'm talking scripture. about. He's talking mm. about your spirit. Your spirit is dead. When you dead. come into this world, you're spiritually dead. 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 You have to be made alive, which is called born again. Mm -hmm. Regeneration. All those mean the same my thing. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm. Oh, mm. Lord. That, can you read that one? Can you read that one more time? Read that one more time. Right here on the screen. No, just read Ephesians 2. Let's read read Ephesians read. 2, first verse. And you have he quickened, which is made alive, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who were dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Spiritually dead means you separated from yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Spiritually speaking, you're so far away from God, it's ridiculous. Amen. Mm -hmm. So God makes you alive. My now you can communicate. Now you can be one with him. But if you don't Sin have that um, of quickness of the Holy Spirit, you're dead, right? Dead in spirit because they don't know the Lord. Oh. So this, and that's what the disciples was trying to do. They were trying to tell people about the Holy Spirit, Jesus, right? The gospel. You see, yeah. Um, go ahead, Miss. Go ahead, go ahead, fast. Go ahead. No, I'm gonna say before no, Jesus. See, the, see what happened is the the Jews back then they were looking for someone to to rescue them right they were mm -hmm. looking for a redeemer but they were looking for flesh someone to to, to relieve them and, and, and free them from captivity of rome they were looking for this great king right because they would live they were fleshly jesus came to bring the kingdom of god which is spiritual and that's why they couldn't understand what he was doing like he said i'm the one that you read about in e in, in isaiah he read the scriptures and closed the book because that's me there's no way it's you we're looking for another great we, we're looking for another king david to come down here and rescue us and take us out of this captivity of seizure and let us reestablish our own kingdom he said i didn't come to bring your king i come to bring the kingdom of god and the kingdom of god is spiritual you want to be rescued from your flesh. I want to rescue you from eternal death. Mm. Hallelujah, somebody. You and worry you about, your, that they you worry still about your flesh. I worry about your spirit. They're doing it today, right? They still again? don't know. A lot of them. In a lot of them still waiting for that they're Messiah. Waiting for that. Yeah, they wait. So they still have to follow the law. So they still follow the law. And, he's <laughs> and they have a lot of laws, I'm telling you. And how many know you can't fulfill them? Mm -mm. Only one person <laughs> fulfill every law. 
That was Jesus Christ. Yes. And by him fulfilling the law, he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. So now I'll be, I'm going to give you that gift. I fulfill the law because you can. So we are alive to God at we were we were alive to God at birth, but we were dead spiritually. For I was alive without the law. Like Romans 7 9 says, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Meaning, Paul was not meaning a physical death, but rather he failed to obey the commands, no matter how hard we try, that all believers understand that if the apostle Paul couldn't live for God in his manner, neither can you. Like Minister Brand said, we were spiritually dead. We were spiritually dead. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and we were spiritually dead. But then one day, the Lord opened our eyes, and you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you were regenerated, and your spirit man became alive. Now you are in communion with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because now you have the Spirit of God residing within you, the Holy Spirit. And we're going to stop right there, uh, and we're going to pick up next week. Again, again, talking more about the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to go deep. I don't want to get too far ahead, but we're going to continue to break this word down of soul and spirit. And, and I really, truly wish that other Christians would come out and hear this because many of them just don't understand and many of us are many of us are very soulish we're we're, we're, we're we're very soulish meaning we're worshiping god not in spirit and truth we're worshiping him in tradition and ritualism not really understanding not really understand it. and uh, when you do something when you worship god like that um, they don't understand what you're trying to do. Amen. You know, they don't understand why you saying those things and you know, just do the tradition stuff, you know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me get back on here. Today he started cussing the flowers, George. Just Say that again. don't don't cuss. Like, <laughs> like no cussing around me. I don't do that. Amen. Don't Amen. do that. Amen. Because you got to be careful because whatever you feed that soul. <laughs> you, that's why I tell folks and I was telling Brother Ken, we, we was having a good conversation at home. I was driving him home from church Sunday and he was like, you know, uh, and I'm not, I'm not sharing nothing that's, that's bad or nothing. Um, but he was 